Hi there church, welcome to another one of our midweek messages. This message we're going to be continuing to look at the theme of the armour of God and this week's message we're going to be looking at the shoes of the gospel of peace. That's what we're calling them. When, when Paul describes them, he describes them a little bit differently, but that's the easiest thing to call them. But let's just look at exactly what Paul says to us here. Ephesians 6, 15, Paul says this, Shoe your feet with the readiness of the gospel of peace. Shoe your feet with the readiness of the gospel of peace. It's not, it's not the gospel that, that covers the Christian's feet. It's the readiness that comes from it. Some of your Bibles might have the word preparedness in there instead of readiness. But it's this sense of, of the being equipped, being empowered, the preparedness and the readiness and the ability to stand that comes from the power of the gospel. That's what Paul's kind of talking about here. And for me, it's just a, you know, it's just such a, a great analogy. It makes a lot of sense in my mind because... Because if ever I'm out and I've got the wrong footwear, I do often feel unprepared. Yeah, I don't know if you're the same. Me and Lauren often go to the Lake District on our holidays. And sometimes we stay in a, a cottage, sometimes we go camping. And when we're there, we, we, we'll do different activities. We might go down the lake uh, and sort of splash about and muck about. We might lounge around on the field that we're camping in. Or we might go a trek up one of the mountains. And and whatever one of those activities we're doing, we need we need special footwear for it. We need the right footwear in order to feel prepared for it. You know, if we went to if we went down just kicking about the lake front, kicking about the water, splashing about and stuff, we'd probably wear flip flops or some old trainers that we don't mind getting wet or maybe even some of those some of those horrible looking plastic crocs that people wear, something that we don't mind getting a little bit wet that will dry out, something like that. But if we then decided that we were going to leave the lake and go up one of the mountains, we couldn't wear the same thing. We would be woefully unprepared. We would need something like hiking boots or climbing boots, something a little bit sturdier. We would need the right footwear for the activity. Otherwise, we just wouldn't be ready. We wouldn't be prepared for what we were trying to do. And I think we see a little bit, a little bit of a glimpse of what Paul was getting at here, that we show our feet with the preparedness that comes from the gospel. And we've spoken about this before, that, but when Paul is envisioning the armour of the Christian soldier, God's warrior, he's, he's envisioning the Roman soldier, because that's what was dominant at his time. That's what was dominant, and that's sort of what he's picturing here. And the Roman soldiers had quite special footwear that they used to wear. They used to wear these things that were called half boots. But what was special about them was that they would hammer hobnails into the bottom of the soles. These kind of thick metal studs that would have a little short nail on it and, and they would hammer these in through the base of the soldier's footwear. And what it did was it, it created something not too dissimilar from from a football boot, something with studs in the bottom. And this is what the Romans did and, and militaries for, for centuries since then have done it. I believe the, the American soldiers done it during the First World War. They would hammer these nails into the bottom of their foot so that they could, they called them trench boots, so that they could wade through the trenches, through the mud and the slime and stuff like that. It gave them a solid footing. And this is what the Romans did. And, and you can understand why they had to do it. Imagine imagine a Roman legion marching a hundred odd miles through the open countryside. You know, there might, there might be up to 7,000 people in a Roman legion. If you're at the front of that column, you're not in a bad position. But imagine you're at the end of it. Imagine you're walking over the ground that 7,000 other people have just marched over. Horses chewing it up, wagons chewing it up, thousands and thousands of steps. If you're at the end of that column, what you're walking in might be quite muddy, might be quite slippy. You're carrying all your stuff. It's going to take you a long time to get there. So they would put these studs in the bottom of their shoes so that they could get a firm foot and so that they would have a proper grip so they could keep on going. 
And then imagine that this same Roman legion finds itself come un coming under attack and they raise shields and they get their walls in place and they try to hold the ground and they've got this army pushing against them. And they're still standing in this blood, in the mud, trying to keep their foot in these little studs that they put in the bottom of their shoes would give them a, a firm, firm rooting so that they were able to dig their feet in and hold their ground and hold their position. This gives us a little picture of what Paul's talking about here because he's saying that we are to shoe our feet with the, the readiness, the preparedness that comes from the gospel of peace. Paul wants us to be able to stand firm like the Romans did and he also wants us to be able to go and advance forward like the Romans did, like the Romans had to, like any soldier has to. And I just want to look at a couple of these things individually. One of the things we said there was that, was that these shoes would help them to make their stand, to stand firm when they were getting pushed back against the enemy. And we've said this before, but the armour of God, the whole passage is all about making your stand against the enemy. If you're a follower of Jesus and you're trying to live for Jesus, you are going to find yourself getting pushed back. People will try and push you back. The enemy will try and push you back. Society will try and push you back. But we need to be able to stand firm. And the way we do that is by standing in the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, the gospel is more than just a story that we tell. The gospel is more than just the good news that we spread around. The gospel is the reality of the victory of Jesus Christ over sin, over death and over the power of darkness. The devil hates the gospel because it's the reality of Christ's ultimate victory. And that's what we're standing in. That, that is our firm footing. That's why we're able to dig our heels in when we're getting pushed back and stand our ground and keep our position because we are standing in the gospel. We are standing in the preparedness that Christ's victory has got us. That's not, that's not, only, that's not the only way that we stand. The gospel also enables us to stand in the grace of God. Romans 5, 1 and 2 says that the, the justification in Jesus Christ that we have through our faith enables us to stand with God in God's grace. And this is quite important because, because so many of us from time to time feel unworthy. We feel unworthy to be in a relationship with God. We feel unworthy to, to experience God's grace and God's presence. It's one of the frequent attacks that come against us from the enemy. This this feeling that we don't deserve what God has given us. He's, we're reminded of, of what we can be like, of all the things that we've done are wrong, and it tries to push us back, and we feel unworthy for the position that we're given in Christ. But Romans tells us that actually it, it's our faith, it's the justification through our faith in Jesus Christ, through the gospel of Jesus Christ that enables us to stand in God's grace, to stand in God's presence. You know, you, you might feel unworthy sometimes to be in God's presence, to be in the position that he's brought you into, to do the things that he calls you to do. And in a sense, that's very understandable because in our humanity, in our own self, we're not really worthy. But Romans 5 reminds us that we are made worthy by the gospel of Jesus Christ, by the justification through our faith. It's almost as if we are we are enabled and we are allowed to stand in the holy place, to stand in the grace of God because the gospel of Jesus Christ covers our feet and makes us ready for it, makes us prepared for that place and the other thing just to mention about this is that the the shoes the, the shoes on our feet they don't just help us to make our stand but they also help us to advance they help us to move forward and to, to get where the soldier is trying to go the gospel has always been 
an advancing message. For the last 2,000 years, the gospel has advanced from a small group of people in one place to all over the world. Something like 2 billion people now call themselves follower of Jesus. And, and, and we are part of that. And we it's our generation now. And we are to be part of that advancing gospel. Jackie Pullinger, the famous English missionary who went to China's walled city, once said this. She says, the Christian must have a soft heart and hard feet. Unfortunately, many of them have hard hearts and soft feet. Well, I find that quite challenging because as because as much as I recognise in myself that I want to see people saved, I want to see the gospel spread, and I've got a, I like to think I've got a soft heart and want to see that happening. I'm challenged by the fact that well, do 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 I have hard feet? Are my feet hard and tough and prepared to go to where the gospel needs to go, or are my feet a little bit soft? It's challenging, isn't it? What about you? Are your feet soft or are they hard? Are your feet prepared to carry the good news of Jesus Christ to where it needs to go? Are your feet prepared to, to, to pay the price and to claim the reward for spreading the gospel? Let me just ask you, when was the last time that you told someone else about Jesus? When was the last time that you personally took the gospel into a situation with you? You know, be that be that in person or online or even just by way of a telephone call. We're, we're living in a strange time at the minute. But just because we're on lockdown doesn't mean that there's no need to spread the gospel. It doesn't mean we're prohibited from sp spreading the gospel. We have to adapt and we have to find ways to continue to take the message forward, even from the position that we're in now. So Paul says to us to shoe our feet with the readiness of the gospel of peace. Let me just ask you, are you ready to spread the gospel? Are you prepared to spread the gospel in Jesus' name and advance it like so many generations have done before us? Let me just pray. Father, we thank you for, for this armour of God that we're able to look at, God, that, that, is, that is available to help us. And we just pray, God, that you would make each and every one of us willing to shoe our feet with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, God. Help us to shoe our feet with the preparedness so that we might make our stand against the enemy, so that we would feel Comfort, so that we would feel liberated, God, and standing in your grace. And so that we would be willing, God, to pay the price and carry the gospel to where it needs to be. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen, church. God bless you. See you soon.